That was a bit I was popping this deep. I was to this bit by Geek About It. It's titled Drake's Alarming Obsession with Street Gangs and Violence. <sighs> because he's a lame <laughs> and he wants to appear hard when he's not. You know, and I I love Drake's music, by the way, but just him as a person, he just seems very corny. And just some of the things that he, he said in his music, I'd be like, boy, boy, you ain't gonna do nothing. But I mean, I guess he's like closely tied with the, he has mob ties, he claims. So I guess people around him are about that life. So he likes to brag about what, what they can do. Not what he can do, but what they can do. Uh, anyway, let's see uh, how he's obsessed with, with gang violence. Let's watch. It's no secret that Jake is heavily connected to the streets. Jake Doyle's got some new goons over there in that OVO camp. He didn't label me as his goon. I labeled myself as his goon. Who are you? I'm, I mm. I'm Jake Shooter. Oh, sh that's big bro. I don't think Drake Shooter would come out and say, "I shoot niggas for Drake." I don't think I don't think they would do that. So, cap. Oh, I'm scared of Drake. <laughs> Not a fighter, he's powerful, he gotta be dangerous in some shape or form fashion. On one hand, Jake seems to be an advocate for peace in the streets. Really? I like to remember the friends I've lost as great teachers. It's a daunting path, you know, to try and be the biggest and baddest from your ends or from your hood or whatever. But on the other hand, he proudly perpetuates violence. Let's break it down. Definitely. Drum's breakout song was a record named Cha Cha. And when Drake first uploaded Hotline Bling with his name The Cha Cha Remix, it was later renamed just Hotline Bling and started being pushed as a single due to the positive reception. When Drum was asked about it, he tried to be diplomatic about the situation, but later he would reveal he felt slighted as Drake took his idea and never once reached out. This. That's a direct bite of Chacha. Yeah, it was. I don't know, it's just really weird. I ain't, I ain't get no reach out or nothing or whatever. Kind of, it, it, it fucked with me for a long time. Back in 2017, he ended up running into Drake at Coachella. Has a conversation with you and... Drake even happened? Some years ago, or whatever. That's why I don't want He was at a party, I approached him. Like, I'm like, hey, bro, you need to talk. You know what I'm saying? He's Stepped outside, out said what I had to say, bro. Like, what you mean, bro? I pressed his ass. But we all know Jake travels with the whole army. Jake's right hand man, Chubbs, has said it himself that he hates it when people think Jake is soft. And so they wasted no time, and them boys got active. I see, I'm like, oh shit. I ain't gonna hold you. His bodyguards. Went to town on the kid. Try to bring it back to me, you know how we shot your side. Just like that one time at Chilla. Oh, he did say that. Bring it back to me, you know how we shot your side. Just like that one time at Chilla. Good thing, man, we're pulling out phones. But his bodyguard is in, not his bitch ass. He ain't touched me. He's a bitch. You know that. Jake himself wouldn't do a single thing, which is smart. But it's also wild how Jake brags Damn, about the work about his I don't know what he's talking about right there. But he's had some of the most disrespectful and that flagrant things cute. done to him that somehow everyone has just let slide. If these same things happened to another rapper, they would never hear the end of it. I mean, Drake has gotten pissed on. And after getting the R. Kelly treatment, apparently Drake ran out of the movie theater like a little bitch because he didn't want that smoke with T.I.'s boys. Not very mob tired, is it? He got a bitch slapped by Diddy. Why don't you bring out how you got smacked by Diddy or some shit? Puff Daddy had beef with Drake. And Jay-Z had to break up the fight backstage. I mean, we could do a whole video about his L's, but that's not the topic at hand today. In 2016, Ian Connor was the creative director for a shoot for the OVO slogan brand. One of the people he utilized as models was the young and upcoming Playboy Cardi. Things would come full circle in 2020 as he'd help Drake and Cardi on a song called Pain 1993. The song is named after and pays homage to Ian, who Drake has been cool with for close to seven or eight years now. In his verse, he recalls how him and Ian were in the strip club throwing money together. Now you should know Ian is notorious for a lot of things, and one of them is posting private conversations. One of the convos he posted with Drake was telling him to get on a song with Cardi made all the way back in 2016. Just having the access to the biggest superstar in the world and him flattering your request surely means they were tight somewhat. Drake even has a sicko tattoo, which drove Twitter crazy. And Ian has even posted screenshots of him calling Capo. AKA Jake's right hand man, Chubbs. A lot of people found this friendship pretty odd considering Ian's controversial career and them allegations. But then again, it seems like Jizzy sorta of has a weird fetish for niggas with questionable histories with women. Brick Baby, who was incarcerated in the LA County Jail with Ian, says Ian Connor told him that Drake had paid him a visit in jail. Like Drake came to visit me, da, da, da. I'm like, that's why. He said, 
Yeah, they shut down visiting for like an hour. Drake was the only one to come up there. Whether you believe that story or not, it seems like these two are actually pretty close. So when Ian posts that he's blocked Drake, it's kind of confusing. Chubbs then comments under Ian's post and reveals that them OVO goons had already put hands on Ian, mm. even calling him a low boy. It looks more sketchy when you realize that Ian Connor is in the Rich Flex video recap, so this tension has to be very recent. I swear, these guys are moving like death row in 96. One guy was hanging over the balcony. Punching niggas, beating up niggas. <laughs> you guys know Drake is a new Tupac? He's running around my like Pac! But as of right now, Ian and Drake seem to have made up. Mm. Drake is a huge fan of a restaurant and nightclub called Delilah. So much so that he has built a tight relationship with this establishment and has hosted dozens of his parties at this place. One of Drake's best friends, Zach B, works for H Wood, a company that owns Delilah. So my friend just thought I was like being weird, like, why do you leave every night? But really, I was like helping every Drake party because he thought it was party like every night. I was finally having a conversation with the guys, and then Drake was like, yo, like, you're the man, like, come link me at the hotel tomorrow. One night in 2018, Drake is with Zach in his favorite bar that he loves to mention in his songs. Instagram influencer Summer Rae is also there with her boyfriend, Bennett Shipes. At around 2 a.m., the young couple decide it's time to leave, so they head to the VIP section to go say their goodbyes. Summer Rae gets through, but Bennett is stopped, and a little back and forth ensues between him and Drake. He then alleges that Drake eyes his friends and makes a throw slash hand gesture as if to signal in order to get this guy beaten up. I can believe this because we've heard stories about the different hand signals that Drake gives to his bodyguards and friends for different situations. Imagine Drake and his homie talking like this. Uh. Close. A girl slides in between, <laughs> starts like getting in Drake's face, just like yelling at him, whatever. Drake just turns his head to the side and then claps over his head like that. <laughs> and then security comes and grips his girl and throws out the fucking... Not the clap. So <laughs> immediately after that, he's pushed outside the back of the club into an alley now cornered by a bunch of people that were in the VIP section. One of these guys is Eunice Benjima, a boxer and also now a celebrity. He fine. Next to him is Chubbs, Drake's right-hand goon, and Jazz Prince, one of Jay Prince's sons. Everybody should know that Drake is closely affiliated with Mob Ties. When you look closely at the video, you see Eunice, a boxer, go in and beat the brakes off of this kid, Whoa. while Drake the shot caller watches from a short distance. Then one of Jazz Prince's goons oh, pushes what? through to go join in on the beating. He's wearing a rabble hoodie. At first glance, it looks like Chubbs and Jazz Prince are trying to de-escalate the situation. But take a closer look. They're actually holding everyone back and making space for this kid to really get beat up. And when Eunice finally walks away, you see them walk closer towards Bennett. An article written by Insider about the situation shows this incident had many of the Delilah workers spooked considering Drake is a regular. Oh. Drake has had tension with a bunch of upcoming rappers from Toronto, but the beef that stands out the most is with Moji. Moji! A guy that Drake co signed by mentioning him on songs and posting on his Instagram. Oh. At that time, a Drake co sign was a life changing one. That's my brother, you know what I'm saying? That's my big brother, you know what I'm saying? Over your game till I die, that's how I'm gonna get there, you know what I'm saying? While everything looked good from the outside, things weren't really going smooth behind the scenes. Moji was heavily repping OVO because he believed he'd get signed to them, that they were a family. He looks but very African. quickly, things changed, as they had allegedly put him in the studio to come up with flows and hooks for Drake to use on his new album. Have you ever ever heard in the history of hip-hop, a man that gives away his creativity and helps make billboard hits, but doesn't get paid a dollar for it, one credit for it, he gets stuck in the hood? It doesn't make sense, but exposing these niggas will make sense. Fuck you, bitch-ass nigga. But there were no real developments in terms of Moji's career itself. Uh, just to let the world know, for the record, I'm not signed to OVO. He was also pissed about the money situation. The cosign was cool, but it wasn't feeding him nor his family. I thought we was family with OVO, but these niggas never paid me a dollar after they stole my way to trying to hide me from the world and hide me from this. This nigga Oliver told me the whole OVO team thinks I deserve a compensation for everything Drake took from me. And all the man just offered me is $500. $500? Can't even pay mama's rent. OVO obviously wouldn't comment on any of these allegations, but they would get it hot in the streets. Tensions rose between their people and Moji and his people. It wasn't too long until they caught yeah. Moji slipping either. After this, Moji would go completely quiet about the situation for a while. At least until Drake dropped Scorpion. But I just heard somebody in the spot playing Drake's album. Right, Drake out say, here! All pop monies, my getting niggas pop touched. Monies. Left what and right. What about, bro? Where are these monies at that free popping niggas? I don't know what the hell this nigga be talking about. Now, fortunately, after a bunch of years, the situation is not being resolved. I just want you to know, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
I, I put that shit to rest a long time ago, man. Like I said, I only have love for you, brother. I wish the best for you always, you know? And Why I hope you know I mean that, man, for real. Jay tells me he's forgiven him and that he will make sure the situation doesn't get any further out of hand. He also says he can't let it bleed into February. Now, he's obviously talking about the tension between their people in the streets. When you do go to watch Moji's recent interviews, he has nothing but good things to say about Drake. How'd you feel summer 16 when Drake uh, mentioned you in the song? First of all, it's big him up though, you know what I'm saying? That's bro, you know what I'm saying? He, he's a real nigga, he might have a love, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He didn't even have to do it, he just did it out of love, you know what I mean? Damn, I didn't know Drake was about that action. <laughs> I mean, obviously, he's not about that action, but the people around him are, which is usually the case. You have these big celebrities and, you know, they might be soft themselves, but they pay people around them to not be soft. So it's like, you fuck with you know, Drake, then you gotta deal with all these other people. That's just how it is. That's wild, that line. I did not know that was about Dram. Makes sense. Try to bring the drama to me, you know, how would y'all try slide? Drake is ruthless. That was unnecessary. That was unnecessary to, to bring that up in recent times because it did not happen years ago. He's petty for that. But, uh, yeah, this was interesting. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos you're gonna watch and I'll see y'all next time. Bye!